We celebrate the good news that was given to Prophet Isaiah in a revelation of the coming of the Messiah. Throughout the book of Isaiah, there's many prophecies about Jesus and his birth, his life, his death, the coming glory of God to, is um, to be revealed throughout the earth because of what Jesus did and who he is. But one of my favorites is Isaiah 9 and uh, verses 7 and 8 that we've sung about and we hear this scripture often in the Advent season. For us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his throne to establish it, to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. Also, I want to read a scripture from Ephesians 2, starting in verse 12. Paul's writing to the Gentiles in Ephesus. Remember that in the past you were without Christ. This is true of all of us at one point in our lives, that we were without Christ before we came to understand who he was and what he did for us. You were not citizens of Israel, and you had no part in the agreement of the promises that God made to his people. You had no hope, and you did not know God. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were far away from God are brought near through the blood of Christ's death. Christ himself is our peace. He made both Jewish people and those who are not Jews one person. They were separated as if there were walls between them, but Christ broke down the walls of hate by giving his own body. The Jewish law had many commandments and rules, but Christ ended the law. His purpose was to make two groups of people become one new people in him and in this way make peace. It was also Christ's purpose to end the hatred between the two groups and to make them into one body and to bring them back to God. Christ did all this with a, his death on the cross. Christ came and preached peace to you who were far away from God and to those who were near to God. Jesus was not only the prince of peace, but he preached peace, not just to the Israelites or the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. And the good news is that in him we have peace. He is our peace. What a great gift peace is. A greater gift can never be given than to have true and real peace and harmony tranquility, wholeness, how people would enjoy and just relish in having that even as people gather in families and extended families 
We know there often is drama and conflict and disagreement and tension and stress. To have a time together in peace is a wonderful gift, a rare thing, a rare thing that we don't see in the world enough. But Jesus showed us the way to find peace. He revealed the peace of God. He revealed the source of all true peace. He gave us the gift of his own life to bring us peace. Now this past week we had an interesting thing happen in the news where President Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And of course, anything that happens in the Middle East brings tension and conflict and protests and sometimes riots and people are divided over what to do about Israel, what to do about the Jewish state and the Palestinians and all these things that seem to boil over all the time. No matter what you think about what was done and what it means, we all desire to see peace in the Middle East. And you know, the foundation for peace has already been laid. I read it in Ephesians 2. The way of peace has already been shown to us. You see, Jesus brought together conflicting sides, conflicting people, Jews and Gentiles. Through his death on the cross, he established and broke down barriers that kept people apart and made it possible for people to be joined together under his rule of peace, his presence, his government, which Isaiah says is on his shoulder, which there is no end to. It's a, it is a government of peace. And it will spread throughout the world. But first it has to start in the hearts and souls of men and women. According to the Bible, the greatest enemy of peace is not necessarily outward things that we think of like war and violence and people fighting over territories and people disagreeing over how to govern certain areas. The greatest enemy of peace is sin itself because it was sin coming into the world through disobedience to God that broke the peace that humanity had with the Almighty and with each other. As soon as sin entered the world, we had trouble, we had violence, we had many things that divided a people. And that is not, again, not just sin that has to do with outward actions like murder or stealing or lying or violence, but also inward sin, attitudes, Things like hatred and racism and envy and anger and bitterness, selfishness, greed and pride and jealousy and fear and unbelief, all immorality and lust. You know, Jesus, in his ministry, which was a ministry to bring peace to people's hearts and minds, he wasn't so concerned about the outward actions and influences that were around people, like how, what, whether they washed their hands and food and followed certain traditions. In fact, he said, it isn't 
food or things from the outside that defiled man. This is in Mark 7, 20. It is things from the inside that defile people. It's from the heart that come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft and murder and adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. That is sin that comes from within. And that sin defiles the individual, but it also defiles families and cultures and relationships and communities and countries. It brings strife and division and conflict and suffering of every kind. And it is sin that is the enemy of peace that alienates us from the source of all peace, which is God himself. So, the scriptures teach us that the first thing that has to be done to restore peace, to experience peace, to learn to have peace within, is to deal with the problem of sin. To deal with the guilt that people feel. To deal with the brokenness in their lives because of sin. That is the greatest hindrance of us experiencing peace with God and peace with each other and peace with ourselves. Now, when in, in the natural, when there is a, people are trying to broker a, a peace between conflicting people, there often is a mediator, a person who can negotiate between those who are at odd with each other. We see this happening or that they attempting to have it happen in the Middle East through many peace agreements. But who can represent us before the Almighty God over the issue of sin? Who can bring reconciliation to God with us because the peace and the relationship we had with God was broken because of sin. We know that true peace comes through a right relationship with God himself. So who can do that? We know who did that. The only one who was able to bring that reconciliation was Jesus himself. You see, God is the only one who can deal with the problem of sin, who can deal with our alienation from him. He is the only one that made a way and could bring a way for us to find peace with God says in the scriptures that we are justified by faith in Jesus Christ and that we have peace with God because of Jesus. Our relationship with God is restored because of what Jesus did and because who he is and what he said and and most particularly because of his death on the cross and his resurrection. Paying the penalty the debt we owed because of sin, canceling all the things that divide us, not only from each other, but from God, too, enabling a way to be open up for us to enter into God's presence and be reconciled and be filled with God's peace. Jesus came to bring peace. He is our peace. He is the hope of the world. He is the one who establishes peace in people's lives. And it has to happen first within us. And then it spreads from that inner work of us being reconciled and 
understanding the truth of the gospel and being united with God through the Holy Spirit, it spreads into our lives and into our families and communities and eventually can spread into the world itself. You know, too often when people hear the term Prince of Peace and they hear that wonderful scripture about Jesus They think it's all about the future. They think it's all about Jesus coming back again and establishing his rule and reign in the earth. But if you really listen to that scripture, you'll notice that it it doesn't talk about his second coming. It talks about his first coming. It says, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. The gift was given at the birth of Christ, at the incarnation, when God became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Son, Father. The peace that God wanted for all humanity began at the birth of Christ and went throughout his life, a short life of maybe 33 years, But it didn't end there. It was established through his death, his resurrection, and it continues to spread throughout the world. The increase of that peace shall never end. No, God is not waiting for some future time to establish peace on earth. He wants to establish peace on earth right now in us and in our communities and in our relationships because of what Jesus has already done. This is the time, this is the day of salvation. This is the time to embrace him as the wonderful counselor, as the mighty God, as the everlasting father, as the prince of peace, to allow him to bring that peace in our lives, to allow him to expand his kingdom within us, At one point, someone asked Jesus, how will the kingdom of God come? Will it come with demonstrations and external things? And he talked about, no, it comes from within. It's among you right now. He was the king. He was dwelling in their midst, and he wanted to establish their kingdom in them first and foremost. That's where real peace happens, when people's lives are transformed, when, they're, when they forgive others, when they learn to love others as he has loved us, when they learn to be patient and kind and, and show the nature of Christ in the world, in their relationships, in their homes, in their communities. There's this uh, scripture in, in Isaiah, in the beginning of Isaiah, that's very another familiar scripture that talks about peace. In fact, it is something that is written, one of the foundation words for the United Nation. And it talks about when The Lord's mountain will be established above all mountains, and all nations will flow unto it in Jerusalem. And it talks about how that people will say, let us go to the mountain of the Lord and learn of him. And the result of God being exalted in the earth and being exalted in, and his glory being revealed in the earth, which it was done through Jesus Christ, through his life and his words and his death and his resurrection, his ascension, the glory of God was revealed into the earth. And as the Lord's mountain is exalted above all other mountains and all people are drawn towards that, it says part of the results is they will take their swords, their weapons, and they will beat them into plowshares. And they won't learn of war anymore, but they will be at peace. You see, that's 
That's the process that God has established through the coming of Christ. It's not just something for some way off future date. It's something that should be happening now in our lives. Instead of fighting with each other and being at war and using weapons against others, we change. We allow God to change us so our weapons become instruments of farming, of helping to cultivate God's kingdom in the earth, helping to bring reconciliation and peace, helping to bring his kingdom through our lives and through what we do, exalting the king above other things so that they can truly see that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The angels that appeared to the shepherds said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And then as they sang glory to God in the highest, they said, And on earth peace among men, in whom he is well pleased. Unto us a child is given. He is given to bring this peace, to complete us, to make us whole, to bring harmony in our relationships, to put an end to strife and conflict, and to bring people together. Even those who are at odds with each other and those who are on extreme opposite ends of the spectrum of whether politics or whatever they are, Jesus can be the one who brings that reconciliation and brings that peace. He can bring people together. And he is doing it all over the world, but it doesn't get the attention that war and division and strife gets. So do not be fearful. Do not be afraid because God's intentions for earth are very good. And that's why he sent Jesus into the world to bring about peace and reconciliation, to bring about harmony, to make us whole, to reveal to us his nature through his son and to bring us into a relationship with him. So as we continue in this time of Advent, let us um, focus on Christ, our peace, the Prince of Peace, and know that he is the one who will give us all that we need to live in peace with one another. Amen.